ٹکے ہوئے اسلام رمضان 15 days have passed may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our ibadat tonight because it is the night of the wiladat and birth of Imam Hassan salawatullah and we seldom get an opportunity to discuss his life or to inform the public about how he lived, what is his contribution, and how misunderstood this Imam salam, has been. We only get one opportunity that is on the 15th of Ramadan or sometimes on the night of Shahada. And in order to understand why there was a methodical and systematic program to discredit Imam Hassan alayhi salam, we have got to go deep into history and understand the environment and understand the situation then. We have to study the environment when Imam Ali alayhi salam was martyred. And also we have got to understand what types of people lived in Kufa. Unless we know as to what was the population of Kufa, what sorts of people lived there, and how many groups were there when Imam alayhi salam, Imam Ali alayhi salam, was killed and martyred. What were the difficulties he faced? And we must also understand that as Mawla alayhi salam passed away on 21st of Ramadan, the ambitions of Banu Umayyah started taking shape. Muawiyah is the first king. I call him a king rather than Khalifa because he himself said, I am a king from Banu Umayyah. Uthman was also from Banu Umayyah, but he called himself a Khalifa. But Muawiyah called himself Malik, that means a king, and a king is different from a Khalifa. If we understand that situation, then we will know as to why Imam Hassan salam has been misunderstood. Why I say this is that if you read the Orientalists, that means those Western scholars who have written about Islam, and they have written about our Aima salam, because they happen to be in English, and it is easily accessible for anyone who wants to read, you will find that so much of ill-conceived ideas, unfounded allegations are there in the books against Imam Hassan alayhi salam, who has been portrayed as a prince of Banu Hashim who knew nothing but living a life of luxury. So there are three things which I would like to deal with tonight. One is the relationship between Hassanain and Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Somebody might ask and stand up to say that what could there be a relation between fathers and son or relation between three imams? It has got to be a good relation, but you'll be surprised what writers have written about Imam alayhi salam. Second thing is about the truce, or about that sulh, which is called between sulh Hassan and Muawiyah. What are the details about it? And the third one is about the personal life of Imam alayhi salam, where he is accused of having married nearly 250 wives. As we know, when Mawla Amir al muminin became Khalifa. Immediately there was a splinter group headed by no one but Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, Talha, a companion, and Zubair, who was not only a companion of the Prophet, but also was his cousin. He was therefore the cousin of Imam Ali, also. son of his what we call Pui, that means puppy or aunt. Now, 
these three well-known personalities headed the opposition against Imam Ali al-Islam. And the first battle was fought, which is called the Battle of the Camel or Jange Jaman. In that, of course, the Muslims were divided in two, two parts. Those who are with Amir al-Mu'mineen and those who are with Aisha and Talha and Zubair. And Imam alayhi salam tried his best that the battle should not take place. Because after all, it was a battle among the Muslims between the two groups. He stood up even on the battle front and said, Oh people, who are you fighting with? against you are fighting against your brothers why should we fight if you have anything to ask why don't you come and ask Ali ibn Abi Talib and he will answer he called Talha and Zubair personally he visited them and he said what makes you come against me because of you Muslims are going to fight and I have to stop this either by fighting or by reconciliation Talha and Zubair said something very interesting in tarikh, in history. He said, Ya Ali, because you are responsible for killing Uthman. Many of you in your personal lives might have also experienced that you are blamed for something which you have not done. Sometimes it happens. Men may say that Murtava said this. And even the angels of Murtada do not know about it. It happens. I mean, it's something which surprises us. But you are named, well, you are not even there, and you don't know. Mola said, I did it. I am the one who stopped it. And when Uthman was besieged by the Muslims from Egypt, I am the one who sent my two sons to supply water to him. Because they stopped water. Hassanain went and gave water to Uthman. And people stopped Hassanain. And Imam Hassan Imam Hussain said, You can't stop water. This is an essential and basic need. And we have come because our father has ordered that water should be supplied. <coughs> and personally I went to Uthman. That means Imam Ali Islam says. I went to Uthman personally to visit him. And I told him, oh Uthman, you have got to admit that you have made an error. Come before people, admit it, and they will go away, I assure you. And give them assurance that from now onwards, you will deal fairly with all the people. That's all. He agreed. He agreed. He accepted the, the advice. Imam al-Islam went home. Marwan came, Marwan ibn al-Hakam, who is son-in-law of Uthman also, and from Banu Umayyah, and he said, Uthman, you must not show any weakness. And he followed the advice of Marwan, and did not follow my advice, with the result that he was killed. And you are telling me that I am responsible for it. Well, say, anyway, this is how it is commonly known. And Uthman is one of those ten people who the Prophet has given guarantee of entering Jannah. They are called Asharun, Ashara Mubashara. Ashara Mubashara are those ten people. This hadith is, is not the way they have reported, but I'm not going to discuss the hadith. But there are ten people who are named as, for whom the guarantee is there that they will enter Jannah. One of them is supposed to be Uthman. Mawla alayhi salam said to Talha and Zubair, if I accept your version, Give me the names. Give me the names of those ten people. So they started giving the names. Uh, Umar, Abu Bakr, Uthman, and so they went on giving names till ninth. When nine names were given, Imam al -Islam said, now who is the tenth? Both of them, after a pause, said, Ya Ali, you are the tenth. So he said, if I am the tenth, then if I am guilty of having killed Uthman, you are guilty of preparing a war against me so that I be killed. This is the reason why Talha and Zubair retreated and they did not take part in the battle. They had no answer to give, so they abandoned the war. 
but Aisha did not. After the battle, when Aisha and her army was defeated, there was already a sharp division. That is one. With this weakness in the Ummah, Muawiyah in Sham declared what is called unilateral government. That means he declared independence of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And he did not accede to Khilafat of Imam. And he declared himself as a Khalifa or as a king. And this is why Mawla Ali al-Islam, to stop that, had to initiate another battle, which is called the Battle of Sifin, so that this problem is solved once and for all. I have to relate this so that you understand what Imam Hassan al-Islam faced, what he inherited, the circumstances which were there, but in brief. This Battle of Sifin went on for several days. At the end, when Maliki Ashtar, who was the commander of the army of Mawla Ali Islam, had just reached the end of it, that means it was a matter of few hours when Muawiyah and Amr ibn al As and all of them would be toppled and the whole thing would be decided. Amr ibn al As, who was the prime minister of Muawiyah, told Muawiyah, look, there is no escape now. This is the final battle and we are going to be defeated. I can propose only one thing. Amr ibn al And he proposed that on the heads of the spears, Quran be lifted, and Muslims should come out to say, why should we Muslims, after how many days? Huh? Why should we Muslims fight? Let Quran be our judge. And this Muawiyah liked. And when they brought Quran on the spearheads, saying that let Quran be our judge, let Quran be our judge, Muslims on the side of Amir al-Mu'mineen turned against Mawla. And they came to say, Ya Ali, can there be a better judge than Quran? These people are really very good. They want us to settle. Let us settle. Mawla said, and this is, this is where the Shias and other Muslim brothers differ. This is the difference. People are asking, what is the difference? I'm giving the difference. The difference is what Ali ibn Abi Talib al-Islam said on that day. He said, that is the Quran, a summit, a silent Quran. And I'm the one who speaks. That is the difference. That we Shias believe that there is Quran, there is no doubt, of it. it is a book of God. But if you want to understand, you have got to come through the Aima alayhi salam. I'm telling you, they said, Ya Ali, if you don't stop Malik, we will kill him and we will kill you. So Malik Ashtar himself reports that while I was on the final assault, somebody came and said, Mawla wants you back. So I said, tell Mawla that the matter is now over. It's just a matter of few hours, and I will be coming back with good news. Mawla said, tell him that my life is in danger. So he came back and he wept. Maliki Ashtar. He cried and he said, Ya Ali, what happened? He said, you sit down. And a committee was appointed. Arbitration. Mawla said, all right, if you want an arbitration, should I sit with Muawiyah? They said, no, no, you will not sit. Should I appoint someone to sit with Muawiyah? They said, no, even that we don't accept. We will appoint an arbitrator. And they appointed Abu Musa Ash'ari. And from that side, Amr ibn al As, the prime minister himself. And they sat for a number of days, not able to decide what to do. Finally, Amr ibn al As, who even today when somebody is extraordinarily diplomatic, we call him Umar As. Actually, he's not Umar As, it is Amr ibn al As. Amr ibn al As, his name was Amru and not Umar. He had that devious way of planning and all that. Abu Musa was a Mr. Simpleton. So he told Abu Musa that, look, why should we worry? We, we neither keep Muawiyah nor keep Ali. Let us find a third man. These two are the bonds of contentions. Let us do away with both of them. 
and find the third way. Abu Musa said that. So that's why he said, because he thought in his mind that he will be the one who will be elected as the Khalifa. He had that ambition. He had that aspiration. Uh, Amr ibn al-As showed so much respect and reverence for Abu Musa that whenever he used to come, Amr ibn al-As would stand up, would ask him to proceed, would ask him to lead the prayers. So Abu Musa thought that I will be the one who will be appointed. So they decided that one day on a Friday in Jum'ah when people are there, first Abu Musa should go on member and say that I remove Ali ibn Abi Talib. Then I will follow, that is Abu Blas, and I will say, I remove Muawiyah. And then we'll tell the people to elect. Abu Musa went on member and he said what he was told to say. The moment he came down, Amr ibn Aas came and he said, since he has already removed Ali ibn Abi Talib and the place is now vacant, I'm keeping Muawiyah in his place. This is history. And this is what Amr ibn Aas has said in his poem, a poem which is called eulogy. Eulogy means qasida. A qasida addressed to Muawiyah. He said, Khala'tul khilafata min haydarin ka khal'in nu'ali min al-arjuli wa albastuha fi ka ba'da al-ayas ka labsi al-khawatimi fi al-anmuli. I took away, I divested haydar karrar from khilafa so easily, as easy as the people who remove their shoes. And then I gave it to Muawiyah, that to you, as easily as people wear the rings. This Qasida is known as Qasida Juljuliya. Famous one. Well, naturally there was a deadlock, there was a stalemate. People with Ali ibn Abi Talib came back with Ali ibn Abi Talib, people with Muawiyah came back with Muawiyah, and there was a division again. Okay. So you can see what happened. Now those people who forced Mawla to accept arbitration, they were the people who said, Ya Ali, you are kafir, and so is Muawiyah, both of you. Why did you accept arbitration? al hukmu lillah, there is no arbitrator but Allah. These are called kharijis or Ibadis, or whoever they are. They, these are the third group. So now this, there was a third group, which are called Mariqeen. They broke the bay'ah of Ali ibn Abi Talib. They fought the third battle with the Mawla, which is called Daharwan, in which nearly every one of them, except few, was killed. One of them was Ibn Muljam, Abdul Rahman, who, of course, whose history we will relate, inshallah, on 19th or 21st. So you can see what happened. Now when Mawla passes away, and there is a shahadat of Mawla, the group in Kufa is divided. There are those who are in favor of Aisha and Talha Zubair. There are those who are in favor of Ali ibn Abi Talib. There are some who are bribed, and they are on the side of Muawiyah, and some who are on the side of Ali ibn Abi Talib. There are people who say that Ali ibn Abi Talib, Billah, was kafir. Now the population of Kufa. Kufa was populated by such people, by even pure and sincere Shias, and also by a mixed population, mixed population of Iranians married Arabs. The Arabs married Iranians. Those people were called red people, Al-Humra. Because two civilizations had mixed for the first time, these children were neglected population. 40,000 of them, all people of loose character. Neither father looks after them, nor mother. Out of these 40,000, 20,000 were in Karbala, in the army of Yazid. This is Kufa at that time. Now Imam Hassan salam comes on the Khilafah. On the 21st of Ramadan, when he ascended the mimba, he said, last night, a man died whose equal history will never be able to provide. This is what Imam Hassan al-Islam said. He was a wali. He was a wasi. He was the truthful successor of the prophet. He was this, he was that. He gave all the 
qualities of Imam Ali. And he also said, he has left nothing behind except this much, and that is also to be given away to so and so and so and so. Now, I am his son, and I am the rightful Imam. I am the one for whom the Prophet said, Al Hassan wal Hussein, Imamani qama aw qa'adab. Hassan and Hussein are Imam, whether they rise or whether they retire. Al Hassan wal Hussein, Sayyidai Shabab, Sayyidai Shabab ya Ahlul Jannah. Hassan and Hussein are the masters, are the sardar of the youths of Jannah, and all that. Anabnu, Anabnu al Bayt, I am the son of this Kaaba. Anabnu Zamzam wal Maqam, I am the son of this Zamzam, and I am the son of this Maqam Ibrahim. They listened to him and they rushed for Bay'ah. They rushed. There was a big rush. Ya Hassan, there is no doubt that you are our Imam. This is how they accepted Imam Hassan as Khalifa. Now, what is Imam Hassan? There is a hadith of the Prophet reported by all Sunnis and Shias. Ya Hassan, you resemble me. You resemble me in my features and also in my character. Anta shabihi fi khalqi wa khulqi. You are, you resemble me in my feature and also in my character. And it is a known fact, all have written, even the enemies, that whenever people looked at Hassan, they remembered the Prophet. There are only two figures in the whole history who are Shabih Paygambar. One is Imam Hassan and one is Ali Akbar. Tabrasi writes in Alamul Wara, very famous book, he writes that when Imam Hassan sallallahu wa sallam used to sit sometimes in summer outside his house just for breathing fresh air and he used to spread his mat and sit there, people would not dare pass by. Whoever came stood there, once having seen Imam Hassan, and the road would get blocked. When the street got blocked, Imam Hassan would realize that people are, cannot move because everyone is standing, just looking at him. That was his impressive personality, which is called Haibatul Hassan. Haiba. Haiba is the personality and impression that a man carries with him naturally. When you, sometimes you come to see a man who impresses you, you can't talk much with him. Like the way we sometimes go to our mujtahideen. We want to say a lot, but we cannot because of that. Haiba. Right. He would stand up, collect his mat and go inside and tell people that you can now go wherever you wish to go. And when he went to Mecca, Reaching near Makkah, he always dismounted, always dismounted. And he said, I would feel ashamed to go into Kaaba or near Kaaba riding. Therefore, he would. The moment he dismounted, everyone with him in the Kafila dismounted. Even others who were not in the Kafila, if they saw Hassan not riding, they would also dismount. That was the Haiba of Hassan. Why I say this? Because Muawiyah knew this. That Hassan ibn Ali alayhi salam is an impressive personality. Achha. They said that Hassan cannot speak. Hassan is not a good speaker. When Imam Hassan alayhi salam stood to deliver a speech for the first time, people heard for the first time Hassan ibn Ali speak. Why? It has been always the sunnah of Aimma that as long as there is one who is elder, they would not speak. As long as the Prophet lived, you can't give me one hadith of Amirul Mumini. Not even one. The moment the Prophet passed away, a hadith started, and Mawla Ali started speaking till we now have Najul Balagha, and much more than Najul Balagha. Ali ibn Abi Talib kept quiet as long as the Prophet was. This is an incident reported by Ahlul Sunnah. That when the Prophet used to sit on Mimbar, Janabi Fatima Zahra would sit indoors. The house was not far. 
The room was not far from the mosque, but she would not come. Not even behind the further. But she would send Imam Hassan, very young. When the Prophet completed his sermon, Imam Hassan would come back and say, Mother, today our Prophet said this, said this, said this. And he would relate the whole thing. And when the Prophet came home, Fatima Zahra would tell him that, Baba, you said this today, and you explained this. And sometimes he would ask, Fatima, were you there? No, I wasn't there. But Hassan told me. And sometimes she related this to Amirul Mu'mineen. So one day, Amirul Mu'mineen said, Fatima, you don't come there. Who tells you these details? She said, our son, Hassan says. So Amirul Mu'mineen said, I would like today to listen how Hassan explains. To listen to what Hassan says. So he remained in the same room but behind the curtain. And Imam Hassan came after the sermon was over. This is exclusively Sunni riwayah, not Shia at all. We have taken from them. Came there. And Fatima Zahra said, son, tell me what the Prophet said today. And he started. And he started. And then he said, he said, Ya Ummi, inna lisani yatalajlaj. Today I feel that my tongue is stammering. Stammering. La'alla Sayyidi Yarani. It, I feel that my master is looking at me, is observing. Somebody elder is present here. I cannot open my mouth. And from behind the curtain, Amir al-Mumin came and embraced his son. It means that when there is an elder, it is the seerat of Aimma that they would not speak. As long as Ali ibn Abi Talib lived, Imam Hassan did not say a word. The moment Ali ibn Abi Talib was martyred, Imam Hassan came into the field and he started his speeches. And when Imam Hassan was alive, Imam Hussein never spoke. When Imam Hassan was killed, then Imam Hussain spoke. So this is how it was the Sunnah of Aimma alayhi salam. So first they say this. And second thing is what Dr. Hustaha Hussein says. In Al Fitnatul Kubra, there are two volumes of Al Fitnatul Kubra. The first volume is Aliyun Wabanu. First volume is Uthman, and second is Aliyun Wabanu. He writes, Why I want to bring this to you? Because this has been translated into English. Our youngsters, when they read, they should not be misled. They said that Imam Hassan and Imam Ali always quarreled. They never agreed. We know that they are Ahlul Kisa. We read Hadith Kisa. Hadith Kisa. When the Prophet said, Haulai Ahlu Bayti. These are my Ahlul Bayt. Lahmuhum Lahmi wa Damuhum Dami. Their flesh is my flesh. Their blood is my blood. Now, in order to give an impression that these Ahlul Kisa did not agree among themselves, so many riwayat were manufactured. One, that Fatima and Ali ibn Abi Talib always quarreled. Nauzubillah. I can't even utter those words. Then Ali and Hassan quarreled. Then Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein always quarreled. You will find this. Now what was the quarrel? If I relate it, I think I should relate that incident which the, he is quoting. He says, Kana al Hassan ibn Ali Uthmaniyan daqiqan. Hassan ibn Ali was in the was a partisan of Uthman. That means he was against Ali, against his own father. One day, Imam Hassan was doing wudu wrongly. I mean, I'm quoting, huh? And Ali happened to pass. And he said, Ya Hassan, do your wudu correctly. And Hassan alayhi salam looked at his father and said, you have just killed one who was doing wudu always correctly. That means Osman. You have just killed one who has already, who was always performing wudu correctly. So Ali ibn Abi Talib said, you have been mourning Uthman for very long. Huh? This is the first impression that they want to create. Banu Umayyah's systematic propaganda. 
to show you the friction between Ali ibn Abi Talib and Hassan. Second, that he married 250 wives. This, of course, has been swallowed by even Shia authors, unfortunately. So when you, Murtada Bhai, sell the books here, be very careful what you are selling, because somebody should not come and tell me, I bought this book from Alif. And this is only a brotherly advice, because I know that you are very careful, but at the same time, it can slip sometimes. The, our Shia authors have written, the 250 wives who had been divorced by Ali, by Hassan, alayhi salam, followed his janaza. Each one wailing and mourning that I was his wife once. This is the reason why Philip Hitti, in his book, History of the Arabs, writes that Ali, Hassan ibn Ali married so many wives that he contracted TB and he died of tuberculosis. A prince who lived in luxury, a man of weak mind and no determination, and things like that. Now, when our young man read this, he says, uh, Imam Hassan was like this. Now, tell me, my friends, it's a matter of common sense. If a person has married 250 wives, at least how many children do you expect he should have? At least, if all have not conceived. 50, 60, 40, 100, some, at least 250 wives. But all of them write that the maximum number of children that Imam Hassan had was 13. And because his wives were such, some of them, that they were bribed by Muawiyah to poison Imam Hassan salam. In fact, one poisoned, the final one. He used to be careful. He married and divorced occasionally when he felt doubtful. But in any case, the number of the wives after divorce and all that did not exceed 10. This is what it is. Now look at the riwayah. The riwayah is that a man came to Imam Ali and said, I have a daughter and I would like to give to your son so that I have a bond with you on the day of Qiyamah. I can stand up and say that I have given my daughter to the family of the Prophet. So Imam Ali says, give to Hussein, don't give to Hassan, for he divorces every night. We have this problem. Why was this done? So that the personality of Hassan ibn Ali, which is so impressive, which is so pious and so full of virtues, is actually demeaned. And the people would start thinking that Hassan is just nothing. And this is what happened, even till today. The third thing was that they say, Sulhul Hassan, that Imam Hassan entered into Sulu. People don't know history, my friend. There was nothing like Sulu. And do people know this? That Sulah, if at all it was there, it was initiated by Muawiyah, <coughs> not by Imam. Allah. What was there? Two minutes or three minutes of background, and then you judge yourselves. Such people of Kufa who were with him, advancing on Muawiyah, you can imagine now. When Imam Hassan -Salam reached near Madain, where of course there was going to take a place, battle was taking place. By that time, some of his army chiefs had already deserted him, including Ubaidullah ibn Abbas, deserted him, just because he received some money from Muawiyah. The only faithful one was Qais bin Sa'd, who remained by the side of Imam Hassan up till the end. The others, including these people who believed Imam Ali to be kafir, Billah, were there. Muawiyah sent five people into the army of Imam Hassan. And they started propagating. Do you know one thing? That Hassan has already asked for truce. 
and the matter started circulating that Hassan is asking for truce. Hassan is asking for truce. He wants to get out of this. He feels that he has been implicated. He wants to disentangle himself. The matter went, well, when one of the Kharijis heard this, he entered the Khaimah, the tent of Imam. Imam was on a musalla, and he tells him, and this is the proof. This is the evidence. He tells him, Ya Hassan, your father was a kafir, and you are a kafir also. For you are asking for truth. And he hit Imam al Islam on the thigh so much that Imam started bleeding profusely. And he had to be lifted from his musalla. Actually, Imam Hassan al Islam would have been killed on that day. That is, of course, his name of, in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Imam al Islam, in order to stop him from further assault, caught him by his beard. <laughs> Imam al Islam held his beard tight. Because he bare held his beard tight, he could not move. Otherwise, he wanted to kill him, kill Imam Hassan. But of course, the thigh was wounded. Imam al Islam was lifted. People said, Hassan wants to make a truce. Hassan wants to make a truce. Hassan never declared a truce. And people started deserting him. That is why Imam Hassan alayhi salam declared what is today called ceasefire. Ceasefire is something else and truce is something else. What he declared was postponement of the battle because of the adverse times. People were deserting and there was no one by his side. But this is injustice of the times. That people when Imam Hassan came back to Medina, people used to come and say, Assalamu alaikum ya mudhill al mu'mineen. Salam upon you who humiliated the Muslims. And Imam would answer and say, Wa ana mu'izzul mu'mineen. I have actually elevated them. Why? Because you deserted me. If I would have been fighting alone with a handful of people, they would have all been killed. You deserted me. People of Kufa, people who were divided from the beginning. And because our people do not know the history, they think that this could not have happened. It happened. And Imam Hussain Islam was left alone. Now, it does not satisfy our Umayyin and Abbasi people and the pens which write against Aima. This does not satisfy them. They write more. They say then Imam Hussain Islam put some clauses in the agreement that I should have money. All the money in the treasury should come to me, especially of Kufa, that I should be this and I should be that. I have gone through this whole subject so meticulously that I have not found even one historian writing those things except Al-Madaini. And Al-Madaini is a first-class liar for whom Sahih Muslim writes, that I will not accept even one report of al Madaini because he was Kadhaab. <coughs> Kadhaab means a, a compulsive liar. The only one, al Madaini. No other one reports. Then, of course, others have copied. But the original one who wrote is al Madaini. Why they did this? So that the Khilafat of Banu Umayyah, after those three Khalifa and after Ali ibn Abi Talib, should not enter into Banu Hashim and should be entrenched in Banu Umayyah so that they can do whatever they like. And this is the reason why today we have that history of Hassan ibn Ali al-Islam, which is sometimes, when we read, sometimes really very shaking. And our children, our boys would read this. There is a need for writing a history for writing the events with analysis so that those who read may understand that Hassan ibn Ali was not, was not like that. He was born on 15th of Ramadan in 3rd Hijrah. And he's the first child of Ali ibn Abi Talib and Fatima to Zahra. Salam. Oh. And that is the reason why. The joy in the household was so great that the Prophet was overjoyed when 
Jibril Amin came and said, we give you glad tidings and good news that we have given a child to you, a boy to Fatima and Amirul. Name him Hassan. Hassan? There is no one English word to translate Hassan. Hassan means good. Hassan means beautiful. Hassan means virtuous. Hassan means sensible. Hassan means reliable. There is no one word. For example, there is a hadith. If this hadith is reliable, we, call, we say hadithun Hassan. Reliable hadith. If, a, if you have taken a, a particular way of working, we say sabilun or tariqun Hassan. So Hassan, every aspect of goodness is in the word Hassan. There is no one word in English to translate Hassan. And Imam and the Prophet said that his name is Hassan and also Shabbar. But this Shabbar can be pronounced in two ways. Shabbar and also Shubbar. That's why we have our mujtahideen who are also called Shubbar. So whether you name your child Shubbar or Shabbar or Hassan, it means that you have named that child after Imam Hassan alayhi salam. So that is the name. And the hadith that we get of Aqiqah, when a child is born to shave the first hair, we get from Imam Hassan alayhi salam's birth. I mean, that is where we first get that the Prophet ordered that he be shaved immediately. And then he said, Fatima, take the weight of his hair and give equivalent amount of silver or whatever well, among the poor as a sadaqa. And this is what we follow. Aqiqa, what we say is this. And then to slaughter an animal as a sadaqa. Imam Jafar Sadi sallallahu alayhi has said this, and we have this hadith in Wasail Shia and everywhere, that when a child is born to you, inshallah ta'ala, aqiqah should be done on before the seventh day. <coughs> aqiqah means removing the hair with which a child is born, shaving it off, and then give a sadaqah equal to the weight, which is, of course, negligible and very small. And then slaughter an animal for a boy, a male, for a girl, a female, and make a niyyah that this is a sadaqah. And then Imam alayhi salam says, do not forget to give sadaqah. Do not forget to give sadaqah. Do not forget, for this is the security of your child. Inshallah ta'ala, this should be followed. And after that, <coughs> the only first imam, for whom the word Sayyid has been used is Imam Hassan al A Sayyid. Only a Sayyid. That means whenever Imam Hassan al -Islam came and the Prophet saw him, he would say, Lakad baraza ilaykum a Sayyid. Whoever who is coming before you is the Sayyid. And all the Sadat who are today called Sayyid are called Sayyid because of that name which the Prophet gave to Imam Hassan al -Islam. May Allah make this night of his wiladah and tomorrow's day, inshallah, a day of blessing for all of us. Inshallah. That we know that Imam Hassan al-Islam's grave in Jannatul Baqi has been desecrated. We know that. Today, if we go there, we cannot even trace properly where Imam Hassan al-Islam has been buried. We know that there are signs there. Inshallah, a day will come very soon, when we will see the haram rebuilt again, inshallah. But even then, we pray to Allah that he may grant us tawfiq to go again and again to Medina and be by the side of the grave of Imam Hassan, alayhi <clears throat> salam. Today, we have heard a very sorrowful news of about 70 mu'mineen, muslimin, being killed while they were praying in the mosque 
in Palestine. Naturally, we cannot allow these things to pass unnoticed. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there should be an end to this torture to Muslims. And on behalf of all of you and my personal behalf, we will convey our condolences and goodwill to the parties concerned and also our protest. We will join the whole Islamic world to express our protest at this random killing of innocent people who were in ruku, most of them, when they were shot dead. May Allah bless their souls, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum.